Awesome. Do you guys see a black thing here where you guys are? Should I clear that out? What I am looking at is it's actually just your PowerPoint. Um, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So today we're going to talk about, I do um, a weekly podcast and it's always the secret of. So um, I originally, I have a company called Pontent. I'll get into that in a second. Hang on. I'll explain the whole thing. Okay. So why me and who I am? Uh, like Justin nicely introduced me. My name is Laura and my background is in marketing and public relations. And I have been doing marketing for quite a long time, over 20 years. And um, my husband and I owned a landscape company that we started 20 years ago when we got married. And I wasn't really involved for the first 10 years. I had my own stuff going on and I had my own marketing company and I had a lot of different clients and I actually did a lot in the food industry. And then 10 years ago, um, just everything just happened. Um, my mom who took care of my, our daughter was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and our son was born and he was diagnosed with autism. And so I, um, I couldn't do what I had previously done because I needed to be home for him. And he needed about 10 to 15 hours of therapy a week. So I went to a, um, a career counselor and I was like, what am I going to do? And I kind of looked around and I said, I'm going to take over my husband's business. So we ended up turning it. Thomas Wright's laughing like, yeah, good idea. So, and he, my husband was thrilled about it. He's like, here, take it. So he, um, I ended up taking it and I kept saying like, we had to find a niche and fill it because I felt like we were landscapers at the time and he was making maybe 250,000 a year and it just wasn't cutting it for us, for, for us to both be employed that way. We needed to make a lot more. And that's, that's like the whole business, not just what he, if he was making that, that'd be great. But, um, he, uh, so we decided to, we kind of looked around and he had gone to this build a pond day at um, a pond distributor. And he's like, it's kind of interesting. I don't know, what do you think about it? So I got involved. We went to Pondemonium for the first time. And I said, yes, I can make a business out of this and I can make it successful. So since then, in the past like six or seven years, we went from 300,000 to $825,000 last year. We have absolutely no debt. And um, last year between Matt and I together, we made over $150,000 in salary. So just to show that there is a lot of money to be made in our field. And a lot of what I did was I automated us. And I'm gonna explain today how I did that and how it worked for us. And for us, we, I track everything. I'm completely crazy about tracking. I think Rob, Bob last year, Rob was like, wow, you, you really, you know, I'm, I was intense, right? Would you say, Rob? <laughs> yes. Yes. I know it was on he was, there, yes. Yeah, he was like, wow, you're crazy. But in a good way, hopefully. So um, last year, since I track every single number, I am aware that $356,000 of work came because we did email marketing. And a lot of that was to our current clients. But because we're staying on top of them all the time, we are able to make more money, not only from people that we reach out to us, but also from people we already know. So I'm gonna talk about this in two different parts. And the first part is going to be uh, why email marketing in general. And it really is, it's an absolutely amazing way to stay in touch with people. The most important thing I can say about email marketing is it can't be sales driven. If you're only writing emails every week, and I even see this with what I read, you know, if, if someone is sending me an email every week that just says, buy this, do this, buy this, I'm not going to do it. It's, it's too salesy for me. If someone comes to me instead with information that's really useful and helpful and maybe doesn't talk about sales at all, we're developing a relationship and they're getting to know me, they're getting to know what we offer and they're starting to see us as a valuable resource. So that's kind of, that's the main thing to understand with any email marketing. What's really cool is it allows you to get in touch with multiple people with the same message. Because, and I'll go through this, but back in the day, I used to copy and paste and forward like no one's business. 
I forwarded everything I did. And then everything I did would just look terrible because it was all said forward on it. So it also, it tells people what you do repeatedly. And that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit today. So we're gonna talk about two different ways to use email marketing. One is a one-time communication with clients at the same time. And that's what I consider like my weekly pawn tip and my monthly newsletter and or my weekly landscape tip, either one. And um, so that's the first part. And then the second part is the automations. And that's a specific campaign that has been written with a series of emails and that goes out to people whenever they reach out to us. So those are the two different things we're gonna discuss and how they differ. So the first part, like I said, is, um, is the emails that go out to everyone at the same time. And at this point on our email list, we have over a thousand people. So, and I'll talk a little bit about how I've grown that. And just so everyone knows, we're based right outside Philadelphia. We are suburban Philadelphia. Um, so we are in a nice big market, which helps. We send out weekly pawn tips 51 weeks a year without fail. Like it just, it never doesn't happen. The one week we don't do it is the week between Christmas and New Year's. Other than that, and people, you know, when I first started this business, um, oh right, I forgot to mention. So then I mentioned that I ended up taking over my husband's business, but remember my background's in marketing. And so once I started using my marketing skills to grow the business, friends and colleagues of ours kept saying, well, how did you do that? How did you do that? And I started doing it for other people. And out of that came a whole separate business where I kind of pulled my marketing skills back in and that was called Pond Tent, which is content for pond builders. From there, I started doing landscaping work and having landscape clients. And that's how Landscape Marketing Secrets came about. So, I talk about pawn tips a lot, but those can all, just because that's what I usually discuss, but the tips and information I'm gonna give are also landscape related. And so when I talk about weather tips, like in December, I might talk about how to create an indoor garden. So again, these aren't specifically, like we're not selling anything in December. I don't know many people on the East Coast or you know, in the, anywhere in the upper states who are, but that doesn't mean we're not still giving advice and suggestions. So it can be a winter pond tip. It can be what to do with your Christmas tree, how to find a Christmas tree. Like these are all things that we talk about and they're just useful tidbits. I talk a lot about planting, about what to plant when. Um, for this, we talk about fish tips. We talk about when to feed your fish. So everything you can imagine, um, we're kind of sending out in a weekly tip to people. And I try to keep them short and sweet and you're gonna show you a couple too. So the way I send mine out, is I use something called MailChimp, and I hope a lot of you guys know what that is. It's a really, really easy to use system that emails people for you. So you put everyone's names and information in it, and the other one that a lot of people use is Constant Contact. And these MailChimp, I like it because it links seamlessly with my less annoying CRM, which is a whole nother conversation maybe I'll talk about in two weeks a little. Um, CRM, customer relationship management. It's just a way to track all your customers. But you can also use emails. I know a lot of you guys use LMN or a Jobber or even QuickBooks. However you have emails, you can then go to MailChimp or Constant Contact. And the price is really cheap. They run from like free to $30 to maybe, like right now for a thousand people, we pay $37 a month. I mean, that's nothing, nothing in the grand scheme of things. So the first thing you need to do to do any sort of these things is you need to set up MailChimp or Constant Contact. Um, and I also work in Service Autopilot as well, but I don't like that at all, so I don't. Um, who to communicate with? And this is probably one of the most important distinctions we can make. The mistake a lot of people make, and what we used to do at first, is we only communicated with people that were our clients. And that doesn't work because if you do that, you're not gonna keep growing your list. So now anyone that ever reaches out to us for anything gets put on our email list. And um, then, you know, and no one, I mean, I don't think we've ever been considered spam because we're not just, I'm not talking about purchasing a mailing list and, you know, getting random people. But I'm saying every person that calls you and says you're too expensive or says now's not the right time, 
even if they go with someone else, it costs you nothing to add them to your email list. And the reason you're doing that is we'll get calls from people, no lie, that say, I've been getting your emails for three years and now I'm ready to purchase a $15,000 pond. Okay. So you don't realize, you know, you have to sell when people are ready to buy, not when you're ready to sell. So that's probably the most important thing I can tell you all is to grow your lists all the time. And I tell my clients that and I'll look at their stuff and they'll have like 60 people. I'm like, come on, how many people reached out to you this year? Oh, a hundred. Where are those people? Like where are the emails? So it's really, really important whenever you talk to someone, any conversation you have, get their email and put it into your email system. So I'm just gonna show you, my daughter just said it's a good idea. Thanks, honey. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you guys a couple tips and just show you what they look like. This is a recent one that actually went out this week for one of my landscape clients. And you guys can read it, but haven't cranked up your summer vegetable garden yet. So again, it's just tips. It's just helpful information for people that you're providing to them. Okay. And um, another example is one I did last week for my landscape clients. And again, these are, I do these for people. And when I do them, I do them like depending on your location. <clears throat> I have customers in California that are obviously, the weather is very different than the weather is here on the East Coast. And it's different here than it is in Boston. So I have certain maps and I look at where everyone is but you can see this tip talks about mulch and why mulch, you need it. Again, I'm not telling you we do mulch, which we don't, I mean, or that my clients do, but we're not talking about why you need to hire us, we're talking about why you need it. So if you're able to make that distinction and talk about things that, why people need your services, as opposed to what you're selling, it really changes the dynamic and makes them, and, and people, I mean, I'll get every single week, every week when I send out my pond tips, at least two people respond. And it could be, oh, we had a question. Oh, I forgot to, um, I forgot to, sorry, I'm being distracted, it's a problem with working from home. Um, every single week I'll hear from people saying, um, you know, I didn't think of that, or thanks for that tip. And we've been doing a lot recently on green peace and about relaxation and about nature and about getting your kids out. And so for us, sometimes it's even a harder sell because we're selling ponds. So what we're telling people is it's an outdoor classroom. So now I'm giving tips from the American Academy of Pediatrics about the importance of being outside. So things like that, you know, you just want to give information and then people write, they wrote right back to me and they're like, I shared this with my grandchildren. This was amazing or I told people how to go on a scavenger hunt and what items to look for. So, and those were in the newsletters. So um, the next is the newsletters. And how does a newsletter letter and a tip differentiate to me? A newsletter is more information in one place. So those happen every single month and I send all my customer newsletters out the first Monday of the month. So they're going out uh, this Monday, May 4th, May 3rd. Um, and for that, I do a main story, which is like I said, so this, this month, my main story for most of my clients was about nature does a body good and the benefits of nature for both you and your family and why it's important to be outside. And now, even if you can't get out far, even to hang out in your own backyard or to take a walk around the block. So that's always things that people want to learn. And then the smaller stories, those are where I get more sales oriented. And those can be more about things like, um, you know, that we're still doing pond cleanings or we're offering mulch services right now. And this is also where if anyone has fresh content, like my company always does, because I also do a blog every week, we link to those blogs in the monthly newsletters. So it's a way of sharing with people just more information about what you're doing. And a question I get when I do this presentation sometimes is, don't people get annoyed? And the answer is not, not to my face. <laughs> you know, I don't see it. Um, maybe they are, but for the most part, people really don't, you know, they don't tap out of this. They seem to really enjoy the tips. And I think as long as you're doing them informative rather than salesy, you're going to find that people are going to keep reading. Does everyone open them? Of course not. The general open rate is about 25 to 
But that's hugely important because if I have a customer with 100 emails and 25% open, that's only 25 people reading the emails every week. I have a customer with 2,000 emails and all of a sudden that's 500 people reading an email every week. So it definitely scales up and that's why I encourage people to get as many emails as you can if I haven't made that clear. So that is the first part. And that is really, um, that's the general weekly tips and monthly newsletters. So before we get to automations, I wanna see if anyone has any questions. None. No, Justin? No, no I, I didn't see okay. any come through on the chat, so. Okay, then we'll keep moving. So the next part I want to talk about is what is an automation campaign? And you guys might have heard, and automations mean different things. They can be, but what an automation basically is, it helps you stay connected to your audience and makes it so that you can eliminate repetitive tasks and focus on the parts of your business you want to focus on. So we're going to talk about a couple different automations we use as a company and how we use them. But the best way I can explain these is what happens when people used to reach out to us and we get leads every single day and um, they reach out to us and say, Hey, I'm interested in this, or I want to know more about this. And I'll turn around and um, I used to go up, my office is on the third floor. So I'd run up three flights of the stairs and I would send an email that I had already sent someone that explained who we were. But like I said before, a lot of times I, I would just forward them and I'd forget to take off the forward. So I would say like, dear John, thank you for asking about our company. And the guy's name is Pete. And it just didn't look professional. And I was like, there's got to be a better way where I can give information to people where I'm not being redundant and I'm not having to copy and paste every single time but I can explain about my company. So that's the point of email automations. And um, again, the way I'm gonna explain it, this is really easy to me. <laughs> However, I live with a contractor, so I understand. If I asked him to do any of this stuff, he would be like, you've got to be kidding me. So um, what I tell people is I do these services for people or I make it so you can do it yourself. So it really depends on um, where you are as a company and what you need to do with automations. So um, I had mentioned before service autopilot, intense. It was way too intense for me. Um, some people love it, but for that, they must have like 100 automations. And again, that's too much. Like I help basic companies who are trying to get, you know, move to the next level. I don't work with these multi-million dollar companies that need these huge, you know, CRMs and these huge automations. So what I'm telling you guys is like just some really basic stuff that anyone can do. So I have four automations and that's it. And that's enough. Um, one is to send a series of emails to people that reach out to our company. One is a series of emails we do when the work is finished. Um, we have a series of emails to people who didn't purchase or who in our business, we like seeing pictures. So before we schedule a call with anyone, we need to see a picture either of your pond or of where you wanna put your pond. So if you don't send a picture, we put you into an automation and then you get an email that says, hey, we noticed you didn't send a picture, we'd still love to work with you. And then a week later, they get one more email that says, just reaching out one more time, you know, have you given up on your pond? And then some people use it to send a series of emails to people when they didn't open your email. You can actually track who opened and who did not, and you can uh, resend it to them. So let's look a little bit at each of these things and what that means. So the first thing I do is what I call a welcome series. And a welcome series is a series of emails to every single person that reaches out to us, telling them who we are as a company, and different things about our company. And um, one way I like to explain this is we have a business coach who's gonna be on next week to talk about uh, virtual sales. And he likes to tell a story, he used to be a painter. And he painted this one woman's house, he had a very successful painting company in Chicago. And he painted this woman's house for years. And one day he was driving by and he saw other people painting the outside of her house. And he called her up. He's like, hey, I saw you had painters. And she's like, yeah, isn't that awesome? 
He's like, well, why didn't you hire me? She goes, oh, I didn't know you did that. Boom, right there. So if you don't tell people what you do, how do you expect them to know? And you know, you might do snow removal. You might do stormwater management. You might do ponds too. Like there's all kinds of different parts of your company. And if you throw everything at people right away, it's overwhelming. So let's take a look at some of my emails. This is the first one that we send out from our company. And it's very simple. Thank you for reaching out to Aqua Reality. We're a full service pond and water features company. We'd love to chat. We also do this really cool thing on our, um, right on our um, website where you can schedule a call. And that was because my husband, like you guys, is mostly in the field and he tends to not have time. We used to, no one could get in touch with him. And it was really frustrating because every time they would try, he'd be, you know, just a lot of phone tag. And I'm sure all you guys are used to that. So I found this amazing system. It's called You Can Book Me and it's youcanbookme.com. And it's literally, it is $10 a month. So I'm gonna take this real quick and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. This is a side here. So I'm gonna pull up my own company. We just got a brand new website, which I'm really excited about. So right here at the very top, it says, oh, see that? Say, look at that, Pond Tip Sign Up. Um, and then right here, it's book your free phone consultation. And when you click on that, you're gonna get an actual um, link to various times when we can talk. And we have times every day, we split them up between morning and night. So whenever works, and we get booked very often, like a lot of more of these are available than you see, but people have booked in times. And so what that does is it takes away the questions. And it's something I'm not sure if any of you guys follow, there's this really famous, amazing pool builder called Marcus Sheridan, if anyone's ever heard of him. And he has this great book called They Ask, You Answer. And it's about answering things that questions people might have so they don't have to reach out to you. So since then, we actually, just show you guys real quick, this is a total side trip, but you know, why not? We have a system now where you can literally build your whole pond from our website. So um, we go down here, Pond Builder Calculator, and you can price out your pond. You can also price out your maintenance, or anything like that. Everything you want, nothing you don't. And you go right down here and you can decide if you want a small pond, a medium pond, if you want a fish cave, if you want a bacteria system. And what this does is it eliminates the phone calls. And this could be as easy, you know, and I don't wanna say this is, uh, this might be a little overwhelming for people that do lawn maintenance, but it can work for that too. And just to show you when you go to here, and you look at seasonal pond maintenance, which would be what you guys would do for lawn maintenance, it has a list of our prices. And I know some people are like, oh my God, that's crazy. Why would you put your prices online? Why wouldn't you? Like if people wanna know, so we have a video and then we have our pricing right there. Our price for winter, our price for, and then for spring, that tells you for each pond up to what size. And again, they ask, you answer. You are telling people exactly what it costs. So let's go ahead and go back to the presentation. So right there, you can see we're telling people right away, schedule your phone call because that way we're not chasing you and you're not chasing us back. We are developing, you know, a system that's going to make you happy because we're not wasting your time. And you can see that we link it to our website and we link them to our pricing so they can see right away what prices we have. And what this does too, is it really filters out the people that are not your customers, which is very important. Cause I don't know how about you guys, but we spend an awful lot of time. Um, we used to reaching out to people that just were never gonna be our customer. So by automating the process, they're able to see things quick. So then the second one says, we'd love to see a photo. If you've not already done so, please send us an email. And then we even took it a step further. I didn't know how to make this all on one page. But um, we even have a video that my husband, Matt, explains why we need to see a photo. So, and again, this is all automated. I created this whole system once. And then all I have to do is put their email in something. I'll show you what. And um, they get these emails. And the way mine work is they get one every week for four weeks. So this is the first one. 
And then the second email they get, it says, is there pond school? Because one thing I did mention is it's really important to have clever subjects. If your subject says aqua reality does this, it's who cares? But is there a pond school? Well, I don't know. Is there? Let me click. No, there's no pond school, but we have an absolute ton of blogs. So check out our blogs. What do you think? A week later, maintenance scheduled all year long. And so this one says, the subject of this one says, imagine a maintenance-free pond all, all year long. And this tells you about our maintenance program. And it also, again, I couldn't fit it all on one screen, so sorry, but it also then links to all of our pricing. So I'm, I have a feeling most of you probably, does anyone put pricing on their website? You can note in the chat box if you do. I guess most people don't. But I'll tell you, it's like the new thing and I'm really excited about it. So even if you don't put pricing, it's still fine, but this is a way, so let's say, like I said, you offer plowing services, you offer landscape services, and maybe you offer stormwater services. Now you're sending an email to people every week that tells them another service you offer, but you're not inundating them all at once. We do this, we do this, we do this. They're like, whoa, I don't even care. So the next one that goes out a week later, um, this one, the subject says, rain, rain, go away from my yard. And this one says, Agua Reale is also a company specializing in stormwater management, including rainwater harvesting. So then we go a little bit into what is, and you notice they all have links back to my website. So that's important too, is that people are able to, as much as possible, you want to link them to something else. So let me see if there's any more. I think that might be it for that. So that is, so again, as soon as someone reaches out, they're getting those four emails. We used to have it because we used to do a lot more flagstone. So then we had another email that said a hard flagstone goodbye. Uh, a little corny, but you know. And that one was um, just to say, you know, by the way, we also do beautiful flagstone work. So I'm sure you guys all offer services that aren't just one thing. And if so, now what if you do just offer one service I would still say it's important to do an automation. And what I would do then is I would show like your employees on one of them, like, hey, we're people just like you. We're a small business. And I do like to mention all the time that we're a family business. And I like my, one of my sayings is from our family to yours, because that's really important to people. People like to know that, you know, they're purchasing from someone like we're not a huge corporation. We live in your neighborhood. We go to, you know, we do neighborhood festivals. We sponsor our son's soccer team. We are as local as it comes, and I want people to know that. So if you have a company that, um, you know, like I said, just does uh, lawn cutting, you can talk about, um, you know, how you got into the business. You can talk about the different services you offer. You can even put a tip in there. And what you're doing is you're continuing a conversation with a potential client. And the reason I say that's important is because you're touching people, but you're touching them not just once, but repeatedly, <laughs> not in a bad way, but um, you're touching people so that they, they remember you and they're getting information about you. And then what happens is once my welcome series is finished, then I add them to my weekly tips and my monthly newsletter. So once you get in my system, <laughs> you're stuck in there. No, you can easily get out. And again, all you have to do is push the unsubscribe button and you're done and we'll never bother you again. So we're very, you know, now some people might say, and it's funny, it's different in England. In England, you have to opt in. You're not allowed to automatically put someone on the email list. In the US, you are. So I highly recommend, if I haven't said it already, putting as many people anyone that reaches out to you, fair game for you to reach out to them. So let's talk about my next automation series, which is what we call a 333 series. And I was in a sales group for a while and that's where we got this term. And from what I understand, I could be wrong, but I heard it came from Nordstrom, the, the clothing store. And Nordstrom tells their salespeople to reach out to customers three days, three weeks, and three months after you finish a project. And you're like, wow, that's overkill. But it, number one, it's not. And then the other thing people say to me is they'll say, well, um, I'll do that by phone. Okay, you know, so will I. <laughs> it's, you know, great intentions. 
And with all these, is it better to pick up the phone than email? Yeah, definitely. But a lot of people, I don't know about you guys, but like my customers, no one ever answers their phone, ever. So we actually, now we tend to text people before we call them or right after we call them to say, hey, it's Laura from Opera Reality, just letting you know, I'll be giving you a call in a minute. So what the 333 series does is it reaches out to people with specific information after we finish a project. So the first one I have here is three days. And that says, thank you for allowing us to work on your recent project. I hope everything met your expectations. Please consider giving us the Google review and or a Facebook review. We'd really appreciate it. So this has two purposes because we're reaching out to them and making sure everything went well. And then, um, and I used to have a mistake here and I couldn't figure out why every customer had my, my cell number and why everybody was reaching out to me. It was driving me nuts instead of our company phone. And then finally I realized that my number was in this email. Like, oops. So here I'm literally giving my personal phone number to every client, not a good idea. So I changed that. But um, what's really, really important here is this is a great way for us to get reviews from people. Because I'm sure you guys have all had that, well, I need a Facebook review, I need a Google review. But the more steps, you're giving to a person to take the less likely they're going to do it so if you're able to limit this process and give it to them where all they have to do is click on this and they're going to be able to give you a review that's way easier than asking them to go google your company and find you so um three weeks later they get another email and this one says it's been about three weeks since we completed your project I just wanted to check in to see how everything was going. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Our goal is your happiness and satisfaction. If you have not yet done so, please consider giving us a Google review and or a Facebook review. We'd really appreciate it. So this is just, um, and again, these, these aren't bothersome because they're not coming in a row. They're coming within a distance. So three weeks after you finish a job, and then the one that's most important and the one my company would have never remembered ever, just to be honest, was um, three months. And that one says it's been a few months and we just wanted to check in one more time to make sure your project turned out as you wanted. Please call us with any questions. Again, our goal is your happiness and satisfaction. It's never too early to think about your next project. And then this is actually my new one's a little different than this because now I have all the pricing. So now the sentence says, um, feel free to build your dream pond right on our website, click here. And this one's really cool. And I'd say this one is the one I hear back from people the most on. And people reach out and say, oh my God, like I can't believe you reached out. And I'm like, who are you? You know, cause again, best intentions, I'm gonna call everyone and I'm gonna keep in touch with them. And, yeah. and by three months, especially, you know, if we do a day job, I don't even remember who they are. And then I have to go back to my CRM. Oh yeah, yeah, hey, how are you? And we also take pictures of everything so that we're able to go back and remind what it was. But this one, I find that people are just so impressed. They're like, wow, what an amazing company that just reached out to me three months after they finished our project. And that, that's so caring of them. And here, I pushed a button one time and I never thought about it again. It's like the old set it and forget it. So when I push a button, they're gonna get all three of these emails and they're gonna get two chances to review me which is pretty cool. And then the third time they are going to hear that there is a way for us to, um, for them to, to, to build their own pond. So um, let me go back. I think there was a third thing I talked about in my automations. Let me find them. Next one. Okay. So uh, sending a series of emails to people who didn't buy your product or send you a photo. And again, what I would do there is, let's say you gave someone a proposal and you never heard back from them. How often does that happen? You know, they ghost you. They're like super, super interested, super aware, and then they just disappear. So back in the old days, which was two years ago for us, we tended to, um, to not follow up, I'll admit. And we got busy. We had other stuff going on. We had the best of intentions, again, but we forgot. And we would just lose people. And then my husband would come home and he'd be like, you know, did you talk to, I don't know. So what do you mean you don't know? Well, did anyone call today? Yes. What did they want? I don't know. What do you mean they don't know? Like, I just, I couldn't keep track of everything. And there was no way I could remember to send emails to every single person 
that hadn't hired us. So all of a sudden, again, I look through my, and it's all about having a system, and I have a very good customer service plan that I'm happy to share with any of you guys privately if you'd like to see how we do it, where we go step by step to make sure we're not forgetting uh, when to talk to our clients. So part of that is if we don't hear from someone like five days after we send them a proposal or five days after we ask them for a photo, they get a follow-up email. And again, that email is automated. It's always the same. And it just, um, it just says, hey, just checking in. And a lot of times we'll get calls like, it's surprising because sometimes, you know, people really are trying to ghost you and they don't want to talk to you. But other times you will find that they just forgot or they didn't see your email or life got in the way. Think of how many times life gets in your way. Things just happen. And what you don't want to do is assume that they're not interested. And it's very easy to do. And we all take it personally. Like, well, they must not like me. The price might be too high. But now, again, all you're doing is pushing one button and you're giving them two more chances to purchase from you. So the second one that we do says, have you given up on your pond? And it would be the same thing. And instead, I would say to people, for you guys, have you given up on your landscape? Or have you given up on your grass cutting? And it's just, it just, and it makes you feel good because all of a sudden, you know that you've reached out to people as much as you could without, you know, driving them absolutely bonkers. But you know that you never let anything fall to the wayside and you didn't have to follow up specifically with it. All you had to do is push a button and it was already in your email system. And um, then the last one I do is I send a series of emails to people. We resend them if they didn't open the email. So again, we can do that for the weekly tips, which I don't do. Um, sometimes I do it for monthly newsletters and I will often do, oh, you know what another one is? We have an automation process now for people who, um, whether they got the contracts, like they, we do yearly contracts. So people send in their contracts and I click a button and they get a series of emails thanking them for signing up with us and telling them what the next steps will be. We also can do it with people who um, didn't sign up, who people we've sent contracts to for our yearly services that haven't followed up. And again, it's just a time saver. Instead of me reaching out to five different people, you know, every day going, oh, wait, I have to email Ted Smith. I never heard. Oh, wait, I need to email. I never got that contract. Instead, it's a system. And it's all about systems, especially for small businesses, because that's how you're going to succeed. It's not, there's no way, no way you guys can remember to reach out to everyone every day. No one can. You know, maybe Justin can as a salesperson because that's his job. <laughs> and I'm sure, but Justin also, you have systems, right, Justin? Yes. Because if you're just like, what am I going to do today? Hmm, I wonder. That's not going to work. Not in your field. And that's the same with us. But we're not Justin. We're not, you know, home all day. But not, no, I came out wrong. <laughs> we're not by, yeah. <laughs> We're not oh, by. Really? Come on. I know. Sorry. <laughs> I meant we're not by a computer, or we're not at our desk, or we're not even at our phones. Like I know my husband. Once he has a machine running, he can't hear anything, so he's not going to be answering the phone or making calls during the day. So this way, your marketing is working for you while you're out still making money. And ideally, you'd have someone like me if you're super lucky. Just kidding. I tell my husband every day how lucky he is occasionally he agrees. But um, if you don't have someone who's going to do this stuff, you know, someone who's doing this stuff for you, figure out a way to automate it and then you can do it yourself. Or I can do it for you. So the final thing I wanted to talk about was um, what I do for people. And again, this was a soft sell, wasn't it? Um, just going to mention at the very end that first of all, I have a free weekly marketing tip. And if you go ahead and I can even get the people, Justin, that were on this call, or you can send me emails. I'll tell you my email is my name at, so Laura at landscapemarketingsecrets.com. Anyone can email me anytime. I love talking about marketing. It's like seriously my favorite subject. And no one in my family likes discussing it with me. So please send me an email. Call me. I'd love to talk to you. I'll even give you my cell number, unlike my clients. So, um, 
But what I offer every week is I do uh, a weekly marketing tip that's completely free. And it tells people things like, I think this week's was, or last week was about treating your employees like gold because your employees are the first line. That's who people see. People don't see Rob, people see Steve. People see the people that are in the front of your store. And those are the people. So that's the kind of advice that I give people. And then I also do a weekly podcast, which is called Landscape Marketing Secrets. And like I said, every week it's a secret. So this week, oddly enough, happened to be the secret of automations. No, that was last week. This week was the secret. I think it was the secret of controlling what you can. And it talked a little bit about how, um, you know, and a lot of times I interview people and sometimes it's just me talking about our business. So next week I am interviewing, I'm really excited. I'm interviewing this guy that does, um, he does landscape photos for a living. So he's going to give advice about what to look for and what to do when you're taking photos. So those are all free and anyone can sign up for those whenever they want. And then what I also do for people, I set up automation campaigns, which I set up for you once, you pay one time and then it's completely done and you run on your own. I also do the weekly pawn tips and or the monthly newsletter for people. And just like I told you guys, all my prices are on my website too. So you are more than welcome to go to landscapemarketingsecrets.com. You could see how I work. You can see my pricing. And um, what I love to tell people is you can pay me to do it for you or I'll help you for free. And I mean that. Like I said, I could talk about this all day. I think that's what Rob is like. Wow, she's really into marketing. Um, it just <laughs> right when we first met. It's like, okay. Um, what were you going to say? Something, Rob? No, no, I agree. You're really into marketing. And <laughs> before you leave, make sure you tell us about the next seminars that are coming up. Absolutely. Because I think those are going to be very important. Yeah. So next week. So one of the things that changed our company and made us grow so much is learning how to do better sales. Part of it was learning the automations in this process, but then we also needed to figure out we were getting the tire kickers. My husband was going out, like if we had 11 people call, he was going out to meet 11 people. And out of that, we'd sell two things. Once we learned these five steps and the right questions to ask, we would go out to see three people and we'd sell three things. And all of a sudden we are completely making it such an easier process for us because we've gotten the tire kickers out of the way on the phone. So I'm really excited. You guys are in for a treat because Tom Reber, who is my friend and our business coach, he does these seminars and charges a fortune. And he's coming on as my guest for free. And he's going to give everyone these, these five questions to ask. Yeah, Rob likes that. And um, he's going to tell everyone how to pre-qualify and how to do all this by the, on the phone, which is really cool because especially now more than ever, customers might not want to be seeing you. And this is a way that with pictures and with phone calls, you can pre-qualify and you can sell things. So that's next week. And then the week after that, we're going to be talking about a marketing plan and things to do and not to do with marketing. And marketing plans are really, really simple, believe it or not. And I can do them for you in three steps. So we're going to talk about the three steps to a marketing plan. And we're going to look at our marketing plan in detail. And I'll explain the different things I do to network and to reach out and all the different ways we reach out to people. So those are the other two seminars. Thanks for wow. suggesting it. Wow. Yeah, a lot there. Sounds, sounds great. I'm excited. Like I said, yeah, I can do that. We're this excited as well. <laughs> So before we go, uh, I can't believe, come on, not one person has had a question. Nope. Even the perky. Uh, let's Is see. Nope. <laughs> I don't see any coming across. I, what, I do have a question. What okay. was the name of that, the place, um, you have that cool link on your website for people if they want to get a call? You can book me. You can book me. Okay. I thought that you was You can really book me.com. And it is $10 a month. And you go to their website and you pay and you put in the calendar and you put in the schedule that you want and then they give you code and you put that code right on your website. And even if you don't have a website, you can then just send them. You don't have to do it through your website. You can do it through youcanbookme.com. 
So they can go there. There's also a system that I know a lot of people use called Calendly. Calendly. And I don't know that much about that. I just, I haven't used that personally. So you can book me is super cheap. And it's one of my many tricks I'm going to talk about in two weeks um, as ways you can help your marketing grow. So we do have a question come across from Kate. Um, how long are your monthly newsletters? They're four stories. Um, you never want to make anything. And I can go ahead real quick. And I'm going to stop the share for one second in case, mm -hmm. you know, I was going to say a bad joke, but I won't. Um, oh, you know what? I can't because I'm on my husband's computer. Never mind. I was going to show you guys what a monthly newsletter looks like. But if anyone wants to see one, again, you can email me at Laura at landscapemarketingsecrets.com and I will send you either a couple more tips or I'll send you what a monthly newsletter looks like. So I try to keep them short and to the point. One story is always something helpful. One story is always something sales oriented. And then the other two um, fluctuate depending on whether you have information or whether you're just looking for general information, if that makes sense. Any other questions? Okay. Well, this has been awesome. I had a great time. I hope everyone else did too. Um, I hope I, I took a note of every one of you, so I'm going to see who comes back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're going to get a series of emails from me. Oh my God, yeah. she found us. <laughs> hey, you guys forgot to come to my call. Hey, don't forget. You can check it out. No, I'm kidding. Um, but I do practice what I preach, and that's why it's so important for me to offer free tips and my podcast. And um, I find them quite helpful, so hopefully you guys will too. Yeah, this was great, Laura. Thank you. We appreciate it. I'm looking forward to next week and the week after that. Hopefully everybody here uh, hops on and tell your friends. There you go. Thank you, Laura. Very, very informative. It's great stuff. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you both for having great. me. Sure. We'll see you again next week. All right. I can't wait. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Right, thank you. Take, Take care, care everyone. Bye-bye.